Hey guys, what's up? It's Jason Hamburg. Um, today I'm going to do a video all about my cockpit. So my bars, handguards, levers, uh, and kind of how I have it set up on my bike. One thing that I'm going to mention right off the top is in a bunch of the footage that you're about to see, I'm wearing completely different gear because we filmed it like literally two months ago. And then the day after was when we were supposed to film all the riding and it got super warm and this is the first time we've ridden the track since that point. So, um, yeah, I've since got set up and I'm, I'm running Liat gear head to toe. So in all the riding stuff, you'll see I'm wearing that. And then I got my old setup anytime I'm kind of talking to the camera. Magic of Hollywood. So, yeah, anyway, I'm really excited about this one. I think it's super niche. Um, so it might not be for everybody, but I kind of try to get into, into detail about how I have my front end set up and the reason I choose the parts and, and have things set up the way that I do. So to kick things off, I think the big thing that I'm talking about when I'm talking about my cockpit setup, it's primarily has to do with my handlebars, uh, my levers, my perches and how they're adjusted. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about my hand guards and my grips, uh, but then also talk a little bit about um, that front end in relation, I think, to what's called the rider triangle, which is also basically the triangle that happens between your handlebars, your seat, or your hips, and the foot pegs. And so I would argue that the cockpit a little bit would include the foot pegs uh, and adjustments you can make there. But primarily, I just want to talk about pretty much this setup because it can influence basically two main factors when it comes to how much enjoyment you get out of riding. One, uh, it just impacts your comfort and kind of your confidence on the bike. If you don't do any thought around it, I think eventually you will get used to uh, how your bike feels and that totally that totally works. Uh, but you know, making adjustments like uh, to your bar bend, to where your levers are, that sort of thing, can just influence how comfortable you feel on the bike. Everyone's body is different. Some people have longer arms, some people's wrists move differently or have less mobility in them. There's different adjustments that you can make to increase comfort. The other thing that those adjustments often lead to can influence fatigue. And fatigue is, for a lot of people, a huge issue. Uh, just straight up getting tired, getting arm pump, and then not being able to ride at the level that you want to be able to ride at. So these are really inexpensive ways to make yourself more comfortable, reduce fatigue, and ultimately just have more fun on the dirt bike. So that's cool. So probably the first place that a lot of people think to go to when we're thinking about cockpit and kind of making your bike your own is the handlebars. There's kind of like four things to think about when it comes to your bars and how they're gonna feel uh, in relation to you and on your bike. Width, height, sweep, and then the flex characteristic of the bar. So obviously the first one is width. Um, the width of your bar uh, kind of can vary and different people prefer different bars. One of the guys I ride with, his bars, I swear when I ride his bike, it feels like I'm just like flying. Uh, and then other people, they ride in a lot of really tight technical trees and they'll actually end up cutting their bars down. Um, I just run a standard bar width. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I'll put that information here. Uh, but yeah, I just run like a standard bar width. I think uh, something fairly neutral is good for me. The other kind of measurement in bars is relation to what's called like the bar height. Um, I see a lot of people going especially taller riders or people that think that they need to be more aggressive will go to either bar risers or like a really big tall bar. In my experience, I would advise against that as much as possible. I run a standard height bar. The reason why I would advise against going to a high bar or handlebar risers if you can avoid it is it kind of puts your body out of a good attack position and puts you more into like an upright position and tends to drop your elbows a little bit. The third measurement is what's called your sweep. So that's basically how much the bars like pull back. I think the biggest thing that it will influence is a lot about how your wrists feel and where your elbows feel and depending on kind of the size of your or the length of your arms, the size of your shoulders and how your wrists move, that sweep is often a really good way to find comfort. Some people prefer their bars to be really flat or really straight. Other people prefer a lot of sweep and it just impacts kind of where their wrists and elbows and how everything aligns up their arm. 
The bars that I use are fairly straight. Um, I'm a little bit taller of a guy and having a little bit straighter actually does create a little bit more room in my cockpit between my hips and the bars. And then the, the fourth kind of measurement or thing to consider when it comes to bars would be your flex. Flex uh, has a lot to do with fatigue and it has a lot to do uh, you know, with things like arm pump and that sort of thing. There's a huge variance between something like a Renthal twin wall bar versus a Renthal fat bar or a Pro Taper Evo bar um, where you're going from a crossbar bar to something that doesn't have a crossbar. Something with no, no crossbar is going to have a lot more flex in the bar. That flex allows to take out a lot of the chatter and uh, like really small braking bumps that you'll experience on like higher speed, single track, that sort of thing, and just reduces fatigue for me. So those are kind of the four main factors that you can consider when you're looking at handlebars is width, uh, height, your sweep, and then the flex characteristic of the bar. So a major thing that handlebars can impact is something called your rider triangle. And that's basically the distance between your handlebars down to your seat or your hips, down to your foot pegs, and then back up to your handlebars. And that triangle there will play a huge role in how comfortable you feel on a bike. Um, and you know, if your rider triangle is really small and cramped, it can be great for somebody who's small or prefers that feeling, or it can be, you know, uncomfortable for someone like myself. I like to try to set my bike up to actually open up my rider triangle a little bit. So I do that with things like less sweep in my handlebars, and I also run like a lower set of foot pegs. My belief is that if I'm needing to create that opening, I'd rather use foot pegs to lower my center of gravity and pull myself back rather than raise myself forward and up through taller bars or through handlebar risers. I use a set of foot pegs made by Fastway. They're, they actually bring the foot pegs down and back about 10 millimeters or so. So it doesn't sound like much, but it makes a huge difference just in how I feel on the bike. Um, but yeah, that rider triangle is something to consider. And if you can kind of understand that and think about it while you're on the bike, um, it, it kind of starts to give your head a little bit of a jump start to think about how you would want to adjust that rider triangle. So when it comes to actually once you find a bar bend that you really like and you're happy with, another thing that I see a lot of variance in is your handlebar roll position. So when I talk about the roll of the bar, I'm basically talking about um, how far forward or back you're rolling the bars in relation to and a lot of times I'm measuring that in relation to the forks. So when I'm mounting my bars, I mount them in a very, again, neutral position. And they're basically just in line with my forks when they come up through. Some people prefer to have their bars rolled. Some people prefer to roll them back kind of into their lap. And I think, again, there's a level of comfort that comes with making that adjustment. Um, and it's, it's worth trying, it's worth kind of feeling it out and seeing what you prefer. The one thing to keep in mind, the biggest adjustment that you're gonna make in that roll is you're gonna impact how the sweep actually feels on your wrists and on your arms. Um, if you have you know, a fairly straight bar, you might not notice it as much, but if you have a, a bar with a lot of sweep and then you roll it forward, it's gonna kind of put your wrists into like that sort of position, right? And they're gonna be twisted out like that. So. Um, again, everybody's body is different, but that's an area that you could look to uh, to make adjustments and feel how it impacts and changes the feeling on the bike is your handlebar roll position. The last thing that I want to talk about handlebar wise is, is the bars that I use, why I use them, and kind of just explain them a little bit more depth because they are really unique. If you've never seen a set of uh, flex bars before, they're super weird, um, but at the same time, I would say probably of everything on my bike, my flex bars are the one thing that I will probably use for the rest of my life. Um, I first came across these bars when I was doing some research because um, I had broken my wrist and then I was getting a lot of wrist pain while riding. And so I started to do some research and I stumbled across these bars and then started to read some forums and people seem to love them. Um, I'll say probably the single biggest thing that people argue against is the fact that they're heavy and they're definitely heavier than normal bars but nine times out of ten 
Uh, the people complaining about that have a huge beer gut. So as somebody with a beer gut, I'm not gonna complain about it. It doesn't matter. There's worse problems to have than having a set of handlebars that are a little bit heavier than a traditional handlebar, in my opinion, for how much benefit they give. So the way that a flex bar works is it's actually a three-piece design. You basically have your center piece, which mounts inside your triple clamps, and then you have your two outer kind of wings or outer bars that mount on a pivot point here and then essentially interact with a dampening system, a compression and a rebound dampener down below. And that's where that adjustability comes in. You can actually pull the dampeners out really easily and you can replace how stiff or soft those dampeners are to give you different flex characteristics in the bar. I run my bars, they're as soft as I can actually have them set up. I run a blue compression dampener and then a yellow rebound dampener, meaning that's the softest setup you can get. Um, from there though, you can go up and you can actually get them, I would say they're still softer than a traditional, uh, say like a pro taper or some sort of cross barless bar, uh, but they're not a ton softer. They're just giving you a little bit more flex. As far as bend is concerned, um, I run just what's called a moto 10 degree sweep on my bike. If I ever had to ride a completely bone stock bike, I would do everything in my power to get a set of these bars onto the bike because they work really, really well. Another really good spot to consider when it comes to how your cockpit feels is your levers and your perches. Um, the way that I like to have my perches uh, and my levers set up, um, as far as where I put them on the bars, I try to run them as far in as I can uh, while still being able to obviously get out there and reach the levers. Um, but the further my fingers can be towards the end of the lever, I feel like I just have better uh, leverage on the lever. Um, I ride with kind of my index fingers on the levers almost at all the times. So another good way to adjust kind of the comfort, your comfort on the bike is to adjust basically like the angle of your, your levers and where your perches sit on the bars. Um, you know, I see a lot of people, probably the majority of things that I see is people have their levers really far down. Um, every now and then you'll see somebody they're like level or they're even up above basically parallel with your front, with your grip. And I mean, I, everyone has different wrists. Everyone has different ways that their body kind of reacts to that angle. Uh, for me, I've found that if I run my, my levers just a little bit below parallel with my grips, it allows me both sitting and standing to have a really neutral position on, uh, on the bike. Um, it allows me to ride still with the majority of the grip on like the palm of my hand. Uh, if my grips are too, or if my levers are too low, I, I start to have to ride in like this pocket in my hand uh, and it puts a lot of pressure and strain on my thumb. So this, this kind of uh, angle of my levers allows me to keep a lot of weight on the palm of my hand without experiencing any pain and then also just prevents fatigue. It, if my levers are too high up, my wrist kind of twists like that and I feel like I get fatigued a lot faster. So I think experiment with different lever uh, angles for sure and try different things you know set it to something go out ride for 10 minutes come back adjust it and that back-to-back -back comparison does a lot to uh, really make your brain understand what these different things feel like and you will find something that's more comfortable versus uh, versus just kind of setting your levers and never testing or or experimenting the two main things that a lever can do uh, for you as far as how it makes things feel uh, one is the actual shape of the lever itself can feel different depending on uh, what your fingers are like and what your preferences are. I use the Zeta CP clutch perch and then the CP folding levers on both front brake and my clutch. Uh, I just like the shape of the lever and I like kind of the pull that it gives me. Um, it's it's kind of crazy how much of a difference just the shape of a lever can make as far as how it feels in your finger when you're pulling it. Um, but that comfort adds up over time. The other thing that a perch can do, and primarily for uh, cable clutches, like the Yamahas, for example, is different perches will place the cable, uh, the end of the cable in a different spot, effectively 
kind of changing the mechanical advantage that you get when you pull the lever in. So that's one of the main reasons I use the CP perch is it changes where the cable actually is on the perch and it makes the pull a lot smoother and a lot easier than a stock uh, lever and a stock perch. So uh, yeah, that's kind of my preferences for levers um, and it's a good place to look. I think, you know, obviously looking at getting not just the Teflon under the perches, but over time investing in some folding levers is a great move just because again when you tip your bike over it's nice to know that you're not going to pick it up and just have the levers completely snapped off i think you avoid that a little bit as well by running your levers further in on the bar as opposed to all the way out and kind of like overhanging off the side of the bar uh, one other thing that can make a huge impact in how the bike feels in your hands is your grips obviously they're probably the single most important place of contact for you on the bike. Everyone will have different preferences when it comes to grips. Some people like a chunkier grip that's a little bit thicker in their hand. Some people like a really thin grip. Um, but I am a really big fan of lock-on grips. I just like the simplicity of a lock-on grip. They're a little bit more money. Um, but yeah, my preference is definitely something that isn't too bulky, but also not too thin. I don't want a ton of vibration coming through the bar and the grip. Um, and then I actually prefer about a half waffle. I did experiment a little bit with a full waffle pro taper grip earlier this summer. I didn't mind it, but I felt like it just kind of opened my hands up a little bit too much. I don't have particularly big hands. Uh, so having that extra little bit of material on the grip, unfortunately it kind of just opened my hands up a little bit and I was getting arm pump just from not being used to my, my hands being as open as they were. So I'm, about, I'm a half waffle kind of guy. Another important part of that is consider changing your grips maybe more frequently than you normally would. Having a good fresh set of grips with uh, you know good waffle and good um, sticky material just makes a huge advantage because you're not having to hold on as tight so it'll help with fatigue. Uh, especially when, again when things get wet or when your hands get sweaty. Not having to hold on to like shitty non-sticky rubber and just kind of having something that allows you to be looser with your grip uh, goes a long way for fatigue. So consider changing your grips out more frequently than you might normally. So the last big thing that I want to talk about with regards to my cockpit setup uh, is hand guards. I probably get asked, you know, a couple times a week on Instagram about why I use flag hand guards or what kind of hand guards I use. Obviously for doing any sort of off-road riding, having a hand guard of some kind is, is super valuable and super important. Some background and some history on my relationship with hand guards. Um, I bought a KTM 125 and it had a set of wraparound hand guards on it. So when I say wraparound, I'm basically talking about a set of hand guards that mounts up at the front of the bars. And then there's a solid piece of metal that runs around and connects into the to the end of your bar and it's a wraparound system. Um, that KTM that I bought had a set of those on it. I went out and was riding with it. One thing that I noticed right away was when I was hitting trees or nicking trees, uh, regardless of how hard I actually hit them, it was snapping my bars completely out of control, right? If I was just grazing a tree, because it was that solid mount and the system had no give, it would just snap my bars in like this and I was getting like super sketchy all the time. And I had mentioned it to somebody who I was riding with and, and they were more familiar with kind of off-road riding and they explained the, the idea that when you have that solid mount system and there's no play, that's what happens is you end up getting those really nasty snaps. Uh, so I ended up taking them off and I put just a cheap set of like UFO hand guards on and right away I felt way more confident in the trees. I could still uh, you know, nick a tree or, or slide past a tree and I'd have some protection for my knuckles, but I didn't have that major snap that was causing, that was caused by the wraparounds. So from that point on, I've been a flag handguard guy. Uh, when I say flags, that's basically just a set of handguards that are mounted in a single spot, typically kind of around the front of the handguard like this. And then over on the outside, you'll see they actually have some give to them. Uh, the guards that I use are made by SXS. They're the same company that actually makes my skid plate. Uh, John in Idaho there uh, sent me a set of these when he sent me my skid plate and I've been using them now for uh, the entirety of the year. They're called the Burley guards and obviously for good reason. They're super 
you know, super big and burly. They have a really solid mounting system um, and they've taken a ton of good uh, wax. I try to run uh, these basically flush with the end of my bars on both sides. Um, and by doing that, I feel like I still get the protection that I need, but I'm not unnecessarily widening my bike out um, any more than it needs to be. So yeah, those are kind of the flags that I use and the reason I use them. I think another thing, another advantage of flags as opposed to wraparounds, depending on the wraparound guards that you get, they actually sometimes mount down kind of say on a traditional bar down closer to like the center of the bar and what happens when you mount down here and then out at the end of the bar is you're actually introducing a new piece of rigidity into that bar and you're eliminating flex from the bar uh, so that's something that i don't think i don't think a lot of people consider flex in their handlebar um, but anytime i've ridden b bikes that have wraparound guards and now that i'm really conscious of flex I can feel that rigidity um, coming through the bar because it just doesn't have the ability to flex the way that you want it to because you're basically putting a brace in between the end of the bar and down uh, where it would typically want to flex. So again, kind of another advantage for me of the flags is it um, they don't introduce that strut that it essentially prevents the bar from being able to flex. All right, so that's kind of everything that I have to say, I think, about uh, your dirt bike cockpit and how you set it up, uh, the reasons why it's important to set it up. I think in summation, um, taking time and being conscious of this uh, kind of area of your motorcycle is a fairly inexpensive way to create a very customized feel, um, both for comfort and then also to prevent fatigue and kind of allow you to ride longer and more efficiently. So, um, you know, be conscious of these different variables and how they impact how you feel. I think one thing that's really important to consider anytime you're doing any testing or experimenting with how you want your bike to feel is try to change only one variable at a time. Uh, obviously, if you know what it is you want or what you're looking for, uh, you're gonna you know go out and do it but if you're just trying to experiment and see how different things can feel on your bike try to change one variable at a time just move your lever position go out and ride come back uh, you know just change your bar roll go back out and ride um, I think only changing one variable at a time is super important just to make sure that you don't get lost and don't necessarily know what's you know what's making things feel the way that they feel so be conscious of that when you're when you're kind of experimenting and yeah um hopefully this was valuable this is probably the most specific video i've made and i think if uh yeah if people are excited or feel like this level of detail about how a bike is set up is interesting i'd be happy to do more of them um but yeah until next time thank you